Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're back with another episode of The Friday Show. We have some stories about ladybug migration and another about Fremont's birthday. We also have another one on the Flint water crisis. How exciting. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, guys. I'm here with our science teacher, Mr. Deligencia. Everyone at Forest Park goes to his lab each week, but how well do we really know him? Many know that he has twin daughters in fifth grade, but let's find out more about him. Hi, Mr. D. How long have you been teaching science? This would be my 12th year here at Forest Park. What made you want to become a science teacher? Well, my mom and dad are in the medical field. My dad's a doctor. My mom's a nurse. So growing up, my brother and I used to go to operating rooms with them, with our scrubs, and it was always fun with science. So that's why my brother is a, a nurse at El Camino Hospital, and I'm still in the science field teaching. What do you like to do for fun? Uh, family time, quality family time with my, my daughters and my wife, and basically just that. Besides Amelia and Adina, do you have any other children? How about pets? I have close to a thousand of children that come to the science lab every day. They, they are, you guys are all my family. But pets-wise, growing up, I have lots of pets, dogs and cats. And my family members, my mom and my brother, always named them fruit name. One of, one of them was named Lemon. There was apple. There's grapes. I'm not kidding. It's real. Uh, we just love to name our dogs uh, fruit names. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Remembering the Titans is my favorite movie. It's based on a real football sports story, and it, it's always an inspiration to me to not give up and be an inspiration out there in the real world. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? It's not where you go, it's who you're with. And it all me, for me, it's always been family. I could be in Paris by myself. It, the main thing is with being with loved ones and people that you care and love about. That's the main thing. It doesn't really matter. I, I would stay here and be with my family. That's the best. On behalf of all the students at Forest Park, thank you, Mr. D, for your service to our school. Thank you. Braden Mannering, a 12-year-old kid, was in attendance last week at the President's State of the Union speech. He was specifically called by First Lady Michelle Obama. Why? He started a program called the Braised Brown Bags. As the name suggests, he would give bags, bags of food to homeless and hungry people in his home of Delaware. These bags will also include a paper that has different organizations to help those in need. This will be his third time going to the White House. Ray's brown bags was inspired when he saw homeless people on the street. His mom said, you should find a way to help them more. He eventually did, and this started Bray's brown bags. Since 2013, he already distributed 4,600 sack lunches. He has visited five other states to spread the message. On May 2015, he helped host a food conference. He and 200 kids discussed the challenges of eating healthily and what people can do to end hunger. No wonder our first lady invited him to attend the president's address. Flint, a city in Michigan about 70 t miles from Detroit, used to be a strong industrial town. But when the automobile industry l left in the 1980s and 1990s, Flint became one of the poorest cities in America. And today, the residents can't get clean water for their homes. About two years ago, the state of Michigan decided to switch the city's water supply from Lake Huron to the Flint River, which runs through the town. This was because of the city's budget, a financial emergency. Soon after the switch, the water started to look, taste, and smell funny. In fact, some people reported of their water being brown. According to researchers from the Virginia Tech, the Flint River is highly corrosive, uh, 19 times more so than the Lake Huron supply. A class action lawsuit alleges the State Department of Environmental Quality didn't treat the water for corrosion. This was damaging to the city's water supply. In addition to that, the city's service lines were made from, made from lead. This leached into the water of the city's homes. The city switched back to the Lake Huron supply in October, but the damage was already done to the lead pipes. The state is now handing out filters and bottled water with the National Guard. What would you do with $1.6 billion? A plane? A bigger house? An island? That's the, the total was up 
to international Powerball lottery last week. Many people from across the country hope to strike it rich by buying a lottery ticket. Or twenty. There's such a frenzy for these tickets that lines stretch from from the counter across the store into the parking lot. Ticket from William Burke. He drove all the way from Nevada to California and waited three hours only to buy a ticket. The way the lottery works is that if no one wins the big jackpot, the money rolls over to the next lottery. No one had won in a long time, and the total reached one point six billion dollars. Before it got that high, a Fremont man won. $779,000. Even though the chances of winning the $1.6 billion were 1 in 292 million, lots of people still want to take a chance. So far, one winning ticket was sold in a city in California, Channel Hills, and two other winners were sold in two other states. There were five more winners who got five of the six numbers and won big money, too. Many people not only want to get the prize, but part of the money also used to buy the tickets also goes to schools. In fact, it generates $1 billion for California schools every year. One woman said that she would love to win the prize, but she would also like to support education. On Wednesday night, one anticipation filled ticket owner said, Well, I'll feel good if I get this tonight, but I don't need it at all. Thank you. Did you know that our marvelous city of Fremont was founded on January 23rd? Yep, January 23rd is Fremont's birthday. Fremont was formed on January 23rd, 1956, which means that it is turning 60. Five small communities joined together on that very special day. There were Warm Springs, Mission San Jose, Centerville, Niles, and Irvington. Any recorded history of Fremont began on June 6, 1795. That was when Mission San Jose was founded by Father Fermin de la Suen. The first English-speaking visitor was Jedediah Smith, the famed trapper and explorer in 1827. In 1846, another famous explorer, John C. Fremont, the man who gave Fremont its name, arrived. He mapped a trail through Mission Pash for settlers to get to San Francisco. Fremont grew mostly due to the gold rush. Unfortunately, the great earthquake of 1906 destroyed most of Fremont's historic sites. From 1912 to 1950, Niles was the home of California's movie industry. Charlie Chaplin, one of the f most famous figures in movie business, made many films in Fremont. Fremont is a wonderful town with a rich history. Take a closer look at our town and you will see traces of what it was. Enjoy it for what it is and take care of it. We love Fame at Forest Park. It is a great program that brings art and music to our classes and decorations for our hallways. Fame stands for Fine Arts Mini Experience, and it is only possible because of dedicated volunteers. There are five lessons each year that combine an artistic style with a music genre to teach a very cool lesson. The students get to create a piece of art in that style while they listen to music. The Renaissance and Mozart, Impressionism and Jazz, Cave Paintings and Drums, or Taj Mahal Tiles, and Music from India, just to name a few. If your class doesn't have fame, it's because your class does not have a volunteer. There are many classes at Forest Park that miss out on this awesome program because we are short on volunteers. All it takes is an hour a week, five times a year. Thanks to the PTA Fame team, the lessons are already planned for you, the materials are already put together. All a volunteer needs to do is read the lesson beforehand and show up. Your parents can learn along with you. They don't need to be experts. Everyone who volunteers beams about how rewarding it is. Many classes have teams of parents run these lessons to share the responsibilities. If your class is short on fame volunteers, talk to your mom, dad, cousin, uncle, or really intelligent talking goat, and then let your teacher know. Yay, fame! With smart technology entering all sides of our lives, it was only a short amount of time before someone invented smart shoes, ones that can be custom built by the owner's choice. Called Shiftwear, these animated sneakers are the idea of a team of entrepreneurs and engineers. The flexible shoes, which will be available as high, medium, and low tops, can be custom made using a smartphone app that is suitable with iOS, Android, and Windows appliances. Shoe owners will have the option of selecting a di design from a variety of patterns and animations drawn by artists or to create one themselves. Despite being electronic projections, the designs are even clearly visible even in the brightest sunlight. What's even better is that by switching on a special light, owners can even show off their designs in the dark. To top it off, they are completely waterproof and can be thrown in the into a normal laundry machine for a rinse. Though the founders will not 
reveal how the magical sneaker works, they do say that they are simply using current technology to suit their needs. The company estimates that the shoes, which are coming in fall 2016, will range in price from $150 to $1,000, depending on the size of the pa panels where the unique patterns are displayed. Hi, my name is Sanvi. My name is Peter. We, we are, are from Miss Dink's third grade class. We are going to teach you this week's Wolverine character. The word is Dan. It means sunrise. The top part represents the sun. The line underneath represents the horizon. The sun. The picture shows the sun above the sea's horizon. Repeat after us. Dan. Dan. One, One more, more time. time. Dan. Dan. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys. Hi, I'm Mega with this week's brain teasers. Last week's primary brain teaser was a hunter shoots and misses three birds on a branch. How many birds are on the branch now? The answer is zero, and the winners are 211, 212, 306, 305, 303, and 307. Last week's intermediate brain teaser was a farmer has 17 goats, and all but nine die. How many are left now? The answer is 9, and the winners are 501, 407, 505, 404, and 406. This week's primary brain teaser is, a murderer is sentenced to death. He has to choose between three rooms. The first is full of raging fires. The second is full of assassins with loaded guns. And the third is full of lions that haven't eaten in three years. Which room is the safest for him? I repeat, a murderer is sentenced to de death. He has to choose between three rooms. The first is full of raging fires. The second is full of assassins with loaded guns. And the third is full of lions that haven't eaten in three years. Which room is safest for him? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, What is correct to say? The yolk of the egg are white or the yolk of the egg is white? Again, what is correct to say? The yolk of the egg are white or the yolk of the egg is white? Please remember to turn in your answer on a decently sized sheet of paper. That's it for brain teasers. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and we'll see you next Friday.